One of the things that we frequently run into as techs is completely dead batteries. Whether or not that battery has been on the shelf for a while and it is not charging, or a device that's been sitting in a drawer somewhere and somebody finally decides to get it fixed. And at a certain point, batteries will just not accept a charge anymore. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are bad. Today I'm going to show you how you can determine that, how you can actually get the battery to start charging again. So let's get into the video. The first example that I'm going to use is on this old iPhone SE. If I take it, for example, and I plug it into a charger, and we wait, we've got no symbol on the battery. And if I come in to test the charge port, just to make sure that's not the reason, let me plug it on in, it'll run its little test, and everything comes back green. So I know that's not a charge port issue. It could be a bad battery, but I don't see any swelling in this. This one was well taken care of. It doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't need a new battery, but as proof of concept, let's try and see if we can charge this battery. So let's just go ahead and quickly take it apart. Insert our pry tool, gently pop up the screen, make sure the bezel doesn't split. We'll reach in there and disconnect the home button. Let me sell some tweezers, pop up the little bracket and disconnect the button. We'll disconnect the B. We'll take off the bracket so that we can disconnect the battery. All right, and inside there we've got those two big pins. Let me get my multimeter out real quick, and I'll plug in my leads, turn it to uh, continuity diode mode. And if you don't have a schematic, this is a quick and easy way to determine which pins belong to data lines and ground. We'll put our black probe, or we'll put a red probe on a ground plane. I'm just gonna put it on top of the SIM tray. And when we go down in here, we can test we know that this lower one is ground and the higher one is our data line. Reading point four on that and we've got ground on this one. So now this is one way to just to test to make sure it's not a device issue. Make sure the device powers on as well. We don't have a short on it otherwise we would have had short on both lines. We'll plug in that, turn on our power supply and then if I look at the actual battery itself it'll tell me on here that it's a three it's a 3.82 volts. So, so we'll set on here, 3.8, 3, 3, 2 volts. Click our output, and the tricky part is doing this without help, but I'm gonna go in there and touch the ground pin. We'll come in and touch the data line, and then we'll go ahead and hold down the power button. And sure enough, you can see we've got an Apple logo, which means this device is working. And looking at the power supply, you can see it's got a proper boot up sequence. And these phones take a little bit longer to boot up, but there you can see we've got something on the display. That being said, we know that the issue is just a completely dead battery. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to, I should take the display off, but I'm gonna be able to get around it by just going like this. Take my probe down in the ground, the other one down in on the data line, and while I do that, you can see that the amperage is slowly dropping, which means I'm getting this battery to charge. Okay, I'm not gonna do this too crazy long because otherwise the battery will get hot because I'm brute forcing the power into the battery. And now we'll take that off and we'll reconnect the battery. And we're, let's see if this has enough juice to actually turn on. If not, just show that, yep, now it actually shows that we need to charge it, which means we are above that threshold that was keeping it from charging. So now, let me just reassemble the phone real quick. Put back the bracket and screws. Gently reconnect, if I can, the home button, just like that. Put back the little bracket, and, and we'll snap it on down, just like that. And we'll close up the phone, just like so. Now when we go to plug in the phone wheel, we get a battery charging symbol. And there we go. Now it is actually gonna charge. So that's how to take a completely dead battery that won't even accept a charge and get it to the point where it'll charge again. Let's do one more example. Well, here I've got one of my favorite watches. This is just to kind of prove the concept. As you can see, my second hand isn't moving. This watch has had a dead battery for quite some time. 
It's a really nice wood watch. It's all made out of wood. And I basically wear it now just, just to have something on my wrist. But let me go ahead and take out the battery. We'll take the four little screws out here. I actually have never taken this one apart, so I'm sure it's, hopefully I don't damage the wood. But this process works on basically any battery, any dead battery. I haven't tried it yet on like a double or triple A battery, but I'm guessing it might actually work as well. These batteries in these watches are really cheap, but if I can quickly get it to charge again, and I know this works because I did it on my daughter's watch about a month ago and it's still running. Off comes the little wood segment there. I'll pop off the little plastic back. I'll lift out the little plastic enclosure. And let's pop out that little battery. It's been dead for, I have no idea how long, maybe a year, maybe longer. I've had this watch for five years now, and I'm pretty sure for most of its life this battery's been dead. Okay, and out pops the battery. All right, on this battery it says 0.3, if I can get it to folk, 0.375. And we've got the positive shell. So if we flip it over, the part that's inside the blue is the negative. So I'm gonna set my power supply the same three, seven, like so. All right, so I'm gonna take the negative, we'll stick it on the top, right in between that blue ring. And we'll come in on the outside with our positive. And we'll watch the amps here. We'll watch the amps here, and it jumps up to 0.04. And it's slowly trickling down. We got 0 0.0329. It'll bounce back and forth, sometimes going higher and sometimes lower. And I'm going to slowly watch that trickle around. And I'm just going to sit here for about a minute. Now it's at 0 0.27, 0 0.26, 0 0.25, 4, 3, 2, one. Down to 15. The lower it goes, the longer it'll take for them to drop another another number but we're at 11 soon it'll drop down to 10 there it goes 9 took it about 30 seconds to get to 9 took it about 30 seconds to start bouncing into the 8 and now it's now it's at 8 and let's plug this back in to the watch so i let it charge for like two minutes which isn't a whole lot of time to be waiting all right we'll take the battery now i know you might be thinking i'll just go get a new battery Sure, but if I can get a few more months out of it for a couple minutes of my time, why go to the store? All right, we'll push that on down in, and we can turn it over and look, and it should already be moving. And would you look at that, it is moving. We quickly put this back together, put back the white piece, push on the water-resistant gasket cap, at least not that it ever goes swimming with this thing. Put back all of the screws, and now, we can put this back on, and I have a working watch again. And would you look at that while we were working on it? The Apple logo has come on the phone. I think I saw that it was disabled, so I'm going to quickly restore it on iTunes. <laughs> oh, it's too dead. To... All right, I'll go ahead and connect it up to iTunes. I'll go ahead and restore the iPhone. And this process will work on Apple Watch batteries, Switch batteries, Samsung batteries, any, any battery, really, that I found you can trickle charge, brute force, uh, it to come back to life. So hopefully this is giving you a clear idea of how to go about taking a completely dead battery that isn't accepting a charge and getting it back to a position where it will actually start to charge. I've been able to utilize this technique on plenty of things, even to get my watch battery to start making the watch work again. But I use it all the time when it comes to working with iPhones, iPads, watches, switches, Anything that has a battery that, basically anything that has a battery. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.